Hey, Mush Eaters. This is an army review for the 2nd Corps 1862 Army of the Potomac, the ACW mod, Napoleon Total War. Now, this is as each division arrived at the Battle of Antietam. This corps was led by Major General Edwin Sumner. We have him right here. Take a look at his statistics real quick. You're never going to get anything uh, here for the generals because their job is purely morale and to inspire other units. Major General Edwin Sumner was the oldest field commander of any Army Corps during the war, and he led the 2nd Corps during the Peninsula Campaign, the Seven Days Battles, the Maryland Campaign, and at the Battle of Fredericksburg. Now, let's take a look at this veteran corps and the divisions that make it. First up, we're going to look at Major General Richardson's 1st Division of the 2nd Corps, where he supports the attack of French's 3rd Division against D.H. Hill at the Sunken Road, and is also mortally wounded. His division played an important role in flanking the rebel troops and shooting them in droves, giving the Sunken Road the renamed title Bloody Lane. So, let's take a look at these hard-charging Union soldiers. The 1st Brigade is led by Brigadier General Caldwell. We're going to review each unit. These are the, the regiments that were able to flank the Confederates out of the Sunken Road. And first up, we have the 64th New York Infantry Regiment led by Lieutenant Colonel Nelson A. Miles. These are all of its abilities. All right, let's take a look. So we've got rifled muskets with an accuracy of 38, a reloading skill of 35, a melee attack of 21, and a charging bonus of 28. A defense of 11, which is solid, but their morale is 26. Probably one of the best units we have seen so far doing our reviews. The 64th New York is a regiment to take every single battle if you're playing as the Second Corps. That is a fearsome reputation, st statistic-wise, to come up against, regardless of what Confederate Union unit you happen to be bringing. All right, now we're going to look at the 61st. A little bit smaller, only 121 men. You know, the, the 64th had 233, so let's take a look here. Their accuracy for the 61st New York Infantry, led by Colonel Francis C. Barlow, is excellent accuracy at 38, reloading skill of 35. Their melee attack is 21, and their charge bonus is 28. Their defense is 10, and their morale is 26. So, so far... This brigade is uh, leading up to its name about how it's going to fight at the Battle of Antietam. Certainly going to have a lot of casualties when you bring this brigade or at least these individual units into combat with you. All right, let's take a look at the 5th New Hampshire, led by Colonel Edward E. Cross. So their accuracy is a, and reloading skills a little bit smaller, but they've got a larger regiment to kind of show for it, so... 24 accuracy, 21 reloading skill, a melee attack of 15, a charge bonus of 20, a defense of 15, and a morale of 14. So still an all-around great unit. Excellent in the fight, but their accuracy is going to be a little bit uh, to be desired. So you're going to want them to get as close as you can to nullify maybe some of the, uh, the better accuracy you might be fighting against Confederates. All righty. Next up, we've got the 81st Pennsylvania, led by Major H. Boyd McKean. These boys have rifled muskets. Their accuracy is 24. Their reloading skill is 22. Their melee attack is 15, and their charge bonus is 21. Their defense is 15, and their morale is 13. So we've got a high morale, high charge attack, accuracy... Brigade. This is going to be one of the finest brigades that you're going to want to bring in the 2nd Corps. 
And we can already see why. My goodness. This is excellent. Bring in 319 men. Wow. All right. Last but not least, we have the 7th New York under the command of Captain Charles Brestel. An accuracy of 23, range 170, of course. Reloading skill of 20, melee attack of 14, charge bonus of 20, and defense and morale of 14, respectively. So, excellent brigade to bring. This is the Sunken Road map, if you wanted to play it. You could play as all of the divisions in the Second Corps. We're just going to go through them one by one. But an excellent, excellent brigade to bring. Can't go wrong there. Having a, a smaller brigade in the back is something I like to do in case a hole opens up or I need to get those troops somewhere. But definitely an excellent fighting unit. You can put these boys on the defense. You can put them on the attack uh, to try and hold objectives. Their job is to get tangled in with the rebels and come out the other side. So make sure they get in there to do the work you want them to. Alrighty. So that was 1st Brigade. Next up, we are going to look at the famous Brigadier General Thomas Meager leading the 2nd Brigade. Some of you are definitely going to know who these boys are. If you're Irish, you're really going to like this guy. This is the man who the man who led the Irish Brigade. They suffer huge casualties at Antietam, uh, especially fighting at Bloody Lane. And let's take a look at this distinguished brigade that fought from the beginning of the war all the way until they were virtually annihilated as a fighting unit. Um, incredible discipline, the survivors of which uh, wrote several books. And uh, Meager himself goes on to survive the war. Dies a little bit afterwards under mysterious circumstances, but that is neither here nor there. First up, a unit we have already talked about, the 69th New York, uh, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel James Kelly. Of course, Meager himself came from the 69th. Now, their range is 100, so they're using buck and ball weapons still. Sometimes the units will switch them out from year to year, but it hasn't happened yet. So their accuracy is 32. Their reloading skill is 32. With ammunition of 20, that is something to be aware of. They're not going to be able to stay in the fight for long. Their melee attack is 16, and their charge bonus is 25. Their defense is just 5, though, but their morale is 18. So I am going to get these boys as close as I can. And you can put them behind some of your other units and wheel them out to deliver a, a deadly blow so they're not taking rifle fire all the way there. But... Yeah, I'm going to use their fire at will off until I get them nice and close to the Rebels. And then I'm going to let them shoot. Because 300, 300 shots of buck and ball uh, destroys, at close range, absolutely destroys regiments. You can send them packing. So, we're going to look up at the 88th New York. Also having buck and ball uh, muskets. Their accuracy is 32. Their reloading skill is 32. So, excellent on all counts. But that low ammunition again. Their melee attack is 16. Their charge bonus is 25. Their defense is 5. And their morale is 18. So once again, another short range regiment. Both combined. 620 men. Can't go wrong there. But that's a lot. that You're going to have to get, get close. And here we are at the actual objective. This is the sunken road right here. You're going to have French's division attacking across from here. We'll have that. But if you're going to be advancing, you got to look at the layout of the ground of where you're going to put your boys. If we put them here, they're not going to be able to hit anything. And they're going to be taking artillery fire the whole time. So we would want to get these boys nice and close. Or if you could manage it, which is always my favorite to do. If there's rebels there, I'm going to put my boys where they can shoot and where they can't get hit. Uh, I like to sometimes take the time to organize my soldiers so they can shoot over a hill. But when the enemy is shooting back, they're just shooting directly into the hill. 
So, something to be aware of when you're looking at moving your formations around. All right. The 29th Massachusetts is next, led by Lieutenant Colonel Joseph H. Barnes. Also buck and ball. Alrighty. Accuracy is 28. Reloading skill is 28. Ammunition is 20. So, use these boys very quickly. Or at the very end. Either have them in reserve to bring them up to repel the enemy at close range, or to storm an enemy position after a few rounds of buck and ball. Alright, their melee attack is 13. Their charge bonus is 20. Their defense is 5. Uh, and their morale is 16. So if you have these boys take an objective and the enemy runs, make sure that they are not countercharged. As if that happens, oh boy, they're going to be packing. 380, this is a really large, a really large brigade. No wonder they took so many casualties. All right, 63rd New York. Bring it 340 men. Also buck and ball. Accuracy of 28, reloading skill of 28. And ammunition, ammunition of 20. You gotta remember it. Alright, their melee attack. Melee attack is 13. Their charge bonus is 20. Their defense is 5. And their morale is 16. So. I'm gonna bring them up. As a. Uh, already have these boys on the move. Of course, you can have these lines as wide as you want, because there's just so many boys here. All right, get uh, Sumner moving. Now let's take a look at the 3rd Brigade. All right. Now we're going to take a look at the 3rd Brigade. which is led by Colonel John Brooke. Now, the division uh, was also supported by some batteries. We'll get to those in a moment. But let's take a look at his second Delaware. 310 men they're bringing to the fight. We're back to rifled muskets. Thank goodness. But their accuracy is 22, and their reloading skill is some of the poorest that we've seen. 15 is just not good at all. But their melee attack is 13. Their charge bonus is 17, and their defense is 9, and their morale is 13. So, not quite as good as some of the others we've seen, but is not bad. Alright, let's take a look at the 53rd. The 53rd Pennsylvania, bringing 317 men into the fight. They've got rifled muskets, accuracy of 24, reloading skill of 16. Oh my goodness. Their melee attack is... And charge bonus is 17 and 19. Their defense, again, is poor at 7. And their morale is 16. So, certainly, if you're going to take fire, if you're going to be taking these brigades, make sure you have a backup plan in case the enemy starts to charge you. Just charge them first, because your boys will not do well in the defense. All right, now we're going to look at the 66th New York. Range 170. Those rifled muskets again. Their accuracy is 23. Their reloading skill is 16. So they're going to be a lot slower than just your average Confederate. Something to remember. Melee attack is 10. Charge bonus is 17. Their defense is 8. And their morale is 13. So, not bad. Let's take a look at the 57th New York. Rifled muskets, bringing 309 men, led by Lieutenant Colonel Philip Parisen. Accuracy of 20, reloading skill of 18. Their melee attack is 10, their charge bonus is 17. Defense of 9, and a morale of 13. I think I would rather operate these boys like this. All right, let's take a look at the 52nd. 119 men that they're bringing in. It's an accuracy of 21, reloading skill of 15, melee attack of 13, charge bonus of 17, defense of 8, and a morale of 13. So we're starting to see about how we would like the 
these regiments to fight and how they should be fought or used to fight. Because that's very clear. Alrighty, now we're going to look at the two guns that are attached to this division. First is the 1st New York Light Battery B, Captain Rufus D. Pettit commanding. 10-pound Parrot's Battery, firepower of 18, range of 925, accuracy of 55, reloading skill of 25. This is a, a good spot as any to launch attacks against the Rebels if you can. But as you can see, if you look where we're at, we're right at the range where our own artillery might start to shoot at our boys. They're right at the apex of the of the ground here before they would launch their attack. And, you know, the entire time you're here, you're going to be under fire from Confederates, so. All righty. We'll reenact a little bit of history here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well, that's it for the first division. Let's go ahead and look at the third div division led by... Uh, Brigadier General William French. He, they would see ex extensive fighting here at the Sunken Road, and it's going to cost them dearly. He's on uh, this side of the road, <laughs> but here. And so he sends two brigades we're going to take a look at over here, and a third on that side. Let's get into it. We are about to cover Brigadier General William French's division. It is both smaller and larger at the same time. All right, so we're going to take a look right at his 1st Brigade, which is under Brigadier General Nathan Kimball. Let's take a look at the 132nd Pennsylvania. Look at these regimental sizes. Okay, it's very important to remember that size does not always is not always a good thing. But let's take a look at their stats, and we'll judge for ourselves. So bringing 750 men to the fight, they have a range of 170, accuracy of 21, a reloading skill of 25. Their melee attack is 14. Their charge bonus is low at 7, probably due to cohesion. Their defense is 15, and their morale is 13. So very, very decent. It's a, it's a good regiment to have. All right, take a look at the 8th Ohio under the command of Lieutenant Franklin Sawyer, bringing 341 men to the fight. We've got a range of 170, an accuracy of 25, a reloading skill of 26. Their melee attack is 16, their charge bonus is 8, their defense is 16, and their morale is 15. So both very high uh, and very good on the defense, which is going to do a lot of that against Confederates, that's for sure. All right, moving on to the 7th West Virginia under Colonel Joseph Snyder. Taking rifled muskets, accuracy is 23, reloading skills 26. Their melee attack is 13, and their charge bonus is 8, and their defense is 18, and their morale is 15. We just got some... Uh, Confederates coming up, so we're going to move up the artillery here. All righty. So, while Morris has only three regiments, his three regiments are absolutely ginormous, and they're not bad. Right, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at Second Brigade, led by Colonel Dwight Morris. It's a little bit smaller than the others, and yet also larger. We have a thousand and fifteen troops here with the 14th Connecticut, Lieutenant Colonel Stanford H. Perkins. Let's take a look. They've got low accuracy and reloading skill. Their melee attack is 8, their charge bonus is 9, their defense is 9, and their morale is 7. So, 
a fresh regiment on the battlefield doesn't always work out well. We'll see how they do in this little coming fight skirmish we're going to have with the rebels. I'm not trying, though, so don't expect anything <laughs> too important. All right, let's take a look at the 108th New York, bringing 740 men to the battlefield. Accuracy of 18, loading skill of 18, melee attack of 6, charge bonus of 10, defense of 7, morale of 9. So not, not great. These aren't great stats, but these are big new regiments, and that's why. All righty. Look at the 130th Pennsylvania. Accuracy of 19. Reloading skill of 18. I mean, 690 men. This is a huge brigade. Reloading skill of 18. Melee attack of 6. Charge bonus of 9. Defense of 6. Morale of 9. So, something to be aware of. These boys are kind of dangerous. And I would want to move... Oh, I did play some. I'd want to keep your general right behind him to keep the morale up. That's for sure. Alrighty. Now we're going to go ahead and look at Weber's 3rd Brigade, led by General... Brigadier General, I should say Weber. Let's take a look at the 1st Delaware. Colonel John W. Andrews. So accuracy of 21, reloading skill of 20. Across the board, melee attack, charge bonus, defense, and morale. All nines. Don't expect these boys to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. But what you could do is you could take a maybe a brigade or some of these largest, remove one of these units, and chevron them up. Give them a, a chevron or two each, and that ought to do real good work for you. All right. So, let's take a look at the 4th, bringing uh, 540 men. Their accuracy is 21. Their reloading skill is 18. Melee attack is 6. Charge bonus 8. Defense of 7. Morale of 9. So, big, large regiments, but they're not very good. So, let's take a look at the 5th Maryland. Rifled muskets bringing 550 men. Accuracy of 16, a reloading skill of 16, melee attack and charge bonus of 7 and 9, and defense morale of 8 and 6. So we know right where this general should be. Moving back and forth between all these units. Alrighty, now we're going to cover the second division, which was led by Major General John Sedgwick. Famously wounded three times at Antietam. He was a hardened commander who would be killed in the year 1864 after ironically saying they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. His attack in the Westwoods would also be repulsed because he used a tactic just like this one, except for it was oriented towards the woods. And as they came out of the East Woods and onto the plains beyond it, they got shelled by everybody. Uh, it was a disaster. So, let's go ahead and take a look at Sedgwick's 2nd Division. The 1st Brigade was led by Brigadier General Willis Gorman. We're going to take a look at his brigade. So, first up is the 15th Massachusetts, led by Lieutenant, John, Lieutenant Colonel John W. Kimball. Now, the... These boys have rifled muskets. Their accuracy is 22. Their reloading skill is 19. Their melee attack is 11, and their charge bonus is 13. Their defense is 8, and their morale is 9. So, it's not it's not great, but it's not perfect either. Um, they'll do solid service for you, but if uh, the going gets tough, they may make a run for you. That's something to keep in mind. Alrighty. Once again, we come to the brilliant 1st Minnesota, led by Colonel Alfred Soley, bringing 477 men. This regiment has been in it since the start of the war. They will cease to exist, essentially, at the Battle of Gettysburg. So we'll look at the, the Second Corps again. Um, you'll see there's a reduced troop count, but they're a little bit better fighters. So their accuracy is 28. 
Their reloading skill is 26. And their melee and charge bonus is 10 and 12. Their defense is 14. And their morale is 11. So, not bad. A solid service regiment. Can't ask for more than that. Alrighty, so now we're going to look at the 34th New York. Bringing 311 men led by Colonel James A. Souter. Their accuracy is 23. Their reloading skill is 21. So a little bit on that lower side. Their melee attack is 9. And their charge bonus is 12. Their defense is 9. And their morale is 10. Alrighty. So not great, but not bad. Gorman's really large brigade. Um... It's a little bit abnormal that it's got five units in it. Uh, but the 82nd New York here, led by Colonel Henry W. Hudson, has an accuracy of 22, reloading skill of 19, melee attack and charge bonus of 9 and 8, and then a defense of 10 and morale of 9. So if I'm going to be using this brigade as a brigade, I'm also going to include... Sedgwick and maybe put an extra $100 each into a Chevron to bump them up. Now, the two additional units that come with this, I mean, you still have to pay for them, but is the Massachusetts Sharpshooters, first company under Captain John Saunders. Good Stanima Light Infantry Tactics. Accuracy, range of 240, accuracy of 45, reloading skill of 20, morale of 3. So if the enemy gets too close, or if they take too many casualties, they will make a run for it. But it can be nice to have some light infantry units that can, while the enemy is engaged here, you can put them out on the side and just let them, just let them have at it. But always remember, they've got plenty of, of range, so you can keep them out of range uh, by skirmishing with the enemy. All right, let's take a look at the second brigade. This is led by Brigadier General Oliver Howard and the 72nd Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at these boys. Alrighty. Very fancy. I guess these guys are kind of like a Zuov unit almost. Yeah, they yeah, I think this is Zuov uniforms, the 72nd, so. All right, their accuracy is 24, their reloading skill is 21, their melee attack and charge bonus is both 14, and their defense is 9, but their morale is 14. What an excellent unit to have in the lineup. All right, who's next? The 69th Pennsylvania, also with a unique uniform edition. Their accuracy is 22, their reloading skill is 21, Melee attack is 13, and their charge bonus is 15. Excellent. The defense is 9, and the morale is 14. All right, we found the uh, hard chargers of the brigade so far. Both large regiments as well. Large regiments with good stats in combat. Just get them close, let them do their work. All right. Accuracy is 23. The reloading skill is 21, but once again, the 71st Pennsylvania led by Colonel Isaac Wistar. Melee attack of 13, charge bonus of 15. Absolutely excellent. Defense of 9, and morale of 15. So I'm definitely going to let these boys lead the way. All right, the 106th Pennsylvania, led by Colonel Turner G. Moorhead. Their accuracy is 23. Their reloading skill is 21. Their melee attack and charge bonus is both 13, which is great. Their defense is 9, which is a little, meh. I mean, their whole brigade is like that. And their morale is 13. So an all-around great regiment for taking objectives, duking it out with the enemy. A little bit closer than normal, but be careful. If they get charged out, they might not last. Alrighty. Now we're going to take a look at... Dana's Brigadier General Napoleon Dana's 3rd Brigade and first up is the 42nd New York led by Lieutenant Colonel George N. Bomford oh wow 
So they're bringing 345 men to the battle. Their accuracy, their, their range is rifled muskets, so 170. Their accuracy and their reloading skill is both 18, so substandard. Their melee attack and charge bonus is 9 and 8. And their defense is 10. And their morale is 8. So not a great unit. <laughs> All right. The 59th New York, bringing 381 men in the regiment, led by Colonel William L. Tidball. Great last name. Their accuracy is 20, reloading skill is 18, and the melee charge defense is all 9. And their morale is very poor at 6. Alrighty. We've got the 7th Michigan here, bringing 402 men in this regiment. Led by Colonel Norman J. Hall. We've got rifled muskets. Their accuracy is 17. Their reloading skill is 18. Their ammunition is good. Their melee attack is 9. And their charge bonus is 11. Defense is 9. And their morale is 8. So, if you notice when you're looking at Dana's... In the uh, buy screen, I should say that these are the cheapest entire brigade that you can bring, and there's a reason for that. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking at them. All righty. Uh, 42nd, 59th, the 7th Michigan, under Colonel Norman J. Hall. Accuracy of 17, reloading skill of 18. They've got rifled muskets. Melee attack is 9. The charge bonus is 11. Their defense is 9, and their morale is 8. My goodness. Now let's look at the 20th Massachusetts, led by Colonel William R. Lee. Now, they're bringing 400 men in this regiment. They've got rifled muskets. Their accuracy and reloading skill is 19 and 18. Standard ammunition melee attack is 11 their charge bonus is 8 and their defense is 10 and their morale is 8 so not gonna do great on on the battlefield pretty much at all so something to think of the 19th massachusetts led by colonel edward w hinks it's got 170 range with the standard rifled musket 418 men in the regiment accuracy of 17 reloading skill of 20 standard ammunition melee attack is 8 charge bonus is 10 defense is 10 and the morale is 8 so this brigade can bring and field a lot of men oh my goodness it's a huge brigade in fact kind of some of these are these two are but they don't have some of the greatest stats some of them do some of them don't it's just something to be aware of when you're looking at uh, John Sedgwick's second division of troops. Now, we do have some batteries here. We've got the first Rhode Island Light Battery A, six gun, 10 pound Parrots, firepower of 18. Good range, 925. Okay, accuracy at 55. The reloading skill is 25. And over here, we've got the first United States Battery I, under command of Lieutenant George A. Woodruff. Six guns, 12 pound Napoleons. That's what I'm talking about. Let's take a look. Firepower is 180. Their range is 810. Their accuracy is 65. Excellent accuracy. Ooh, there you go. You <laughs> misfire, <laughs> apparently, over here. Alrighty. There we go. Hitting over here. Not doing great. At the Confederates leaving the objective to come fight but that's all right okay well that's the third division we've looked at the first division second division and third division i hope that looking at the complement of troops that come under all of these different brigades will give you some ideas 
on how to better build your armies when taking them. Or specifically, if you're a little overwhelmed with the amount of different choices there are, this kind of, I hope, gives you some incentive to play around and try things out. In the link in the comment description below, I'm going to have the mod itself along with the Discord for the mod, so you can come join us at any time, even if you just want to hang out and talk American Civil War. There's plenty of boys to do it with. And if you want to download the mod, you are free to. I'm on there as well. You can find me. Send me a friend request. I also have my own Discord that you are free to welcome and come join. I'm thinking about having a match where we play for gold, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see. All right, folks. Thanks for watching and being part of the video. I hope you found it interesting on your part. And if you have any questions, just leave them in a comment down below. Please like and subscribe. It certainly helps a lot more than you know if you've uh, watched this video all the way through. It's quite long. But that's the second core review for 1862. Well, Mush Eaters, thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next episode. Close your eyes and hear my voice.